Many severely disabled children live in a prison inside their own bodies, unable to speak. Many not even able to communicate the simplest things. But now help is on the way. A Canadian team is developing the first ever real life mind reading machine. Our Beatrice Politi tonight with this amazing new breakthrough invention. Okay, Max, are you here? There you are. Hello. Let's back you out. 16-year-old Max Castellane lives in a body that doesn't work. Every 15 minutes or so, a coughing fit which can cut off his airway temporarily. A lack of oxygen at birth left Max with cerebral palsy, a group of disorders that affect body movement, muscle coordination, and may also cause learning disabilities or developmental delay. Max can't speak, he can't move, and many might dismiss him. But to his family, Max is a regular 16-year-old boy. He likes TV shows that 16-year-old boys would like and movies. He laughs appropriately at the right spots. Um, he loves teenage girls. He loves, you know, girls at school, um, especially blondes. These are things his family has deduced. What they really want is to hear them from him. Your hand comes up and you're saying something with your voice. You've got lots to say. I'm just not always sure what that is. The uncertainty has left Max's mother, Karen Castellane, with so many questions. Are you happy? Do you like us? Do you love us? What do you want to do with your life? They're questions without answers, but the search for the key is on. So Max, what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, headset on your head. A key that might be cut here at Canada's largest children's rehabilitation teaching hospital. These children, we believe, are all cognitively capable. So in their minds, they're, they're quite alert. They understand what's going on and they have preferences and wants and desires but are just aren't able to articulate those in a conventional way. This infrared light technology is one of the tools being developed here at Bloorview Kids Rehab in Toronto that could open up a world of choice, communication and control for children with severe disabilities, children who can't move or speak. So that particular technology is called near-infrared spectroscopy. So basically it's using light to find out how active your brain is. It delivers light through these fiber optic cables and it measures how much light comes back. By measuring how much light is absorbed in certain wavelengths, scientists can infer what level of activity is in the brain. So here's your first choice. In one study, nine able-bodied adults were shown various drinks and asked to make a mental decision about which one they wanted, but not actually say it out loud. This is an activation map. An active brain needs oxygen. Red indicates more oxygen. Blue indicates less. The goal is to decode preference, spontaneous reactions from people uh, without them having to speak, without them having to gesture. Researchers were able to tell people's preferences with an average 80% accuracy, but only after the fact, by reviewing the data and analyzing it. How about a joke? Do you want to tell a joke? Yeah? Okay. Max can answer yes or no questions. He can open his mouth to indicate yes, and he retracts and tenses his lips to indicate no. The speech-language pathologist Sherry Fronda has observed Max over the last three years. She doesn't know how much he understands. When he didn't respond, it was hard to know why. Was it because he was not understanding or was it because he wasn't interested in what I had to say? She hopes to hear Max's voice someday. It's not a luxury. Communication is a right. Back at Bloorview Kids Rehab, researchers are working on another approach called a real-time computer interface, where you can detect what the brain is doing as it's doing it. When the pictures match, we want you to sing to yourself, and when they don't match, I want you to just let your mind go blank. When the pictures match, the ball should go green and get bigger. When they don't, the ball should be red. The feedback is instantaneous. Potentially, we could connect it to an individual and have them you know, do some computer activity, maybe you know, making choices for communication, choices of activities to do. There are other studies underway, measuring muscle vibrations or twitches in the paralyzed as a means of communication, looking at electric conductivity of the skin through sweat, and something called facial thermography. We just completed a study where we, we showed that we can classify emotions, like um, sad and happy emotions, with over 80% accuracy, simply by looking at the temperature on your face. But even that high percentage carries uncertainty. 
80% sounds really accurate, but polygraphy only ranks at about 84. And that's considered particularly unreliable when it comes to reading uh, folks and reading whether they're lying. The technologies need to achieve greater accuracy in reading the physical processes in the brain, like oxygen blood levels, processes the researchers themselves hesitate to call mind reading. We're really just looking for activation in response to a stimulus. And it's a stimulus that we've delivered at a known period of time. There are ethical concerns as well. You'd have to be able to shut off these technologies voluntarily. Like if I don't want you to know what I'm thinking about, I should be able to shut off my device. But the real ethical issue is giving kids like Max a voice, from deciding what shirt to wear to determining for themselves how they want to be cared for. In you know five years, ten years, we'll be able to say that we can equip every single child, adolescent in Canada with severe disabilities. We can equip them with a means of communication, with a means of interacting with their environment. <coughs> It's like a parent waiting to hear their child's first word and how excited they get when they say mama or dada or something like that. So, oh yeah, we would be like uh, new parents all over again.